everybody welcome back this is Miss Faye and this is my world today's topic is why did the narcissist pick you why did he pick you in the first place before we get started I want to say welcome welcome to the channel welcome to all of the new viewers the new subscribers and welcome to you who have been with me from the beginning I really appreciate you. Now, we do have a letter, so let's dive right into this letter and see what she says about this issue. The narcissist. Now, every time I talk about the narcissist, I realize that we may have some new people who don't even know what a narcissist is. So let me explain that real quick. The narcissist, doesn't matter, male or female, is a person who is possessed with a demonic spirit it's a person who is possessed okay and um you know when we think about possession we think about people going around with you know green stuff coming out of their mouths or smoke coming out or looking crazy or whatever uh-uh people walking around today in the street people your family members could be in your immediate family can be possessed by an evil spirit. And the spirit is what is controlling that person. But that person accepted the spirit. The spirit doesn't just jump on people. You have to accept it. And you accept it in stages in your life. You know, the spirit may, when you're young or something, spirit may get you to, you know, steal some candy. You know, you go to the store, you want something, then you steal it, okay? Then when you get a little older, the spirit may tell you to beat your friend up, go over there and, you know, or to take his money or to scam him or whatever. When you get older, the spirit will come to you for something else. See, it's an incremental thing. And the more you say yes to the spirit, the stronger the spirit is in you, all right? So the narcissist, the spirit is very strong. The spirit has taken over this person. That's the narcissist. And it is a demon. Which means that the narcissist is only there for supply. That's why he looks at everybody. For supply. And what is supply? Supply is your emotions and your resources. Everything about you is supply for the narcissist because the narcissist is an empty vessel inside other than that demonic spirit. All of the original soul of that person is gone. It's the demon that you're dealing with. Okay? So once you understand what a narcissist, narcissist is, it helps you to uh, realize that everybody out here isn't who they pretend to be. <laughs> okay? All right. And the narcissist is a person, a man or a woman, who's constantly looking for a supply because they can't live without it. You understand? And again, I'll make the analogy of the vampire who needs blood to survive. It's the same thing with the narcissist. They have to have supply that they get from other people for them to live. That's why the narcissist can never be alone. Ever. They have to be with someone so that they can live. That supply has got to be coming from someone. Okay? And your emotions, your resources, is what the narcissist will drain you of and destroy you in the process. Okay? All right, so now we know what a narcissist is. Let's read this letter. Okay, she says that um, she is the main supply of a narcissist. And uh, in my video, I did talk about the main supply and the uh, gutterette. These are the two women that the narcissist keeps in his stable. Okay? And everybody else is just, you know, additional supply. At 45, I did not know what a narcissist was. Or the character traits of one. I know you're not the only one. I didn't know what a narcissist was either until I got involved with one. I really didn't. 
I had, and my father was a narcissist, but I didn't realize that's what it was until I got on my spiritual journey after I was discarded by the narcissist and went through that traumatic ordeal with that narcissist for, what, six years, six, seven years? When I finally got out of it and jumped on my spiritual journey, that's when it was revealed to me what I went through and also revealed that my father was a narcissist. And that's probably why I was attracted to this narcissist. Okay? All right. I had heard the words, but never knew that I had been in a relationship with one for 14 years. It's a lot of women sitting right there. They don't know that this man is a narcissist. They do realize the treatment that they're getting is traumatic, but they don't, they, they haven't put a label on it. It's just a label, but it's a demon. They are demons. All of what you describe happened to me. I was the main supply and had no idea that I was that woman. The gutterette, as you have described, was there in the beginning. He lied throughout the 14 years, saying that he did not know where she was and had not heard from her. That was a lie. As we have broken up, she is still in the position you described. Okay, he's saying that he did not know where she was and he had not heard from her. Well, the gutterette and the narcissist, they can always find each other because they've been together so long, so many years. They are both narcissists. But they, the thing about it is they feed off of other people. You see? But the gutter rat knows about every relationship the narcissist have been in. The gutter rat knows it all. And um, it's funny because when I was with the narcissist, he did mention to me that uh, one of his associates uh, was asking him about me, you know. Oh, you know, oh, you're with somebody now. I hear that she, I see she's small. She's this, she that. So this woman, I was trying to figure out who she was after a while. And he never really said. But I do know that he, I found out that he had been married at least four times. Four times. And that's what I know about. Okay. And uh, I only... He only presented uh, three, three uh, young men as his children. But who's to say he didn't have a whole lot of other children somewhere? You know, narcissists hide children, families and marriages and all that. They don't always tell you the truth. So all of these things I found out in hindsight about this man. But about this gutterette, she was always there. And I'm sure that when he discarded me, he was still, you know, communicating with the gutter rat. See, the gutter rat is where the narcissist can be, can go and be who he really is. The gutter rat knows his true self. Because she's seen him do some terrible things. And they've done terrible things together. They have orgies. They still kill and try to destroy people together. Okay? But they can't feed off of each other because neither one has a soul to feed off of. You see? So they have to feed off of other people. And then they just come back together just, you know, to do their thing. And keep it away from the people that think that they may be decent people like the main supply. You see, the main supply, to be chosen by the narcissist as the main supply, let me tell you what you got to have. You need to be a, a pretty nice looking woman. All right, because, you know, he got to show people that, 
you know, he can pull a nice looking woman and that he is into women so that you don't suspect that he's also into men because many of them are on the DL, you see? So now you need to be a nice looking woman. You definitely have to have your own money. You definitely need to be pretty self-sufficient. Pretty much self-sufficient because he needs those resources. When he comes to you, that's, that's what he's looking for. Okay? And he's going to push you to sex right away. But the way that he gets to the sex is that he love bombs you. All right, now, now, you know, when you talk about love bombing, think about this. You meet a man, and all of a sudden at your door, you're getting big bouquets of roses. You know, the man is bringing you flowers, bringing you candy. Then when, when this beau brings you up, he takes you to a nice fancy restaurant. On Saturday morning, he calls you up and say, you want to go shopping? He takes you shopping and buys you whatever you... That is what love bombing is. Now, of course, the narcissist can only love bomb you with whatever his little budget is. And remember, the narcissist is getting money from one of his supplies. So a lot of the things that he can love bomb you with, he's getting it from his other supply people and giving it to you. It, most of the time, these narcissists don't have anything. You can't have anything in life if you're not stable. You see, where you can be stable and work on it and build it. And that's not the narcissist. They travel around too much. So they need somebody who is stable. See? So they can always come home and they will stay right there and drain that person. And when they feel like they drain you dry or run you crazy or whatever, then they'll go and find another supply. Of course, they have... Um, additional supply all the time just because you are the main supply you are not the only supply these narcissists have a whole string of people as a matter of fact the narcissist that, that I was with told me he said I know a lot of people and he does and he could go to them anytime and get something from them he has some of them even waiting for him to show up again because women, we too desperate. <laughs> we too desperate to have a man. And see, this particular narcissist, he was very, uh, you know, he was attractive. He had him a little fancy convertible sports car to attract women and all that kind of thing. He dressed nice. So it was, it's no um, reason why he wouldn't attract a woman who had something. Because he's pretending he's got some. You see, when I met the narcissist, I met him. He was in a very nice home. Beautiful home. Okay? And, um, but I didn't realize what was going on behind that. This narcissist was leaving his other main supply. The main supply was supposed to be in this home. They had purchased this home together, but the main supply had not sold her home yet. So she left her home and moved into this brand new home that they had redone. And I'm sure a lot of money went into that. She had a good job. It wasn't him. It was her money. Okay. Going into that for them to have this life. Of course, he married her and everything. But when I met him, she had left and gone back to her original home and started divorce proceedings on him. You see? Now, I'm young. I'm dumb. <laughs> Desperate like everybody else. Wanting a man. And here's a man looking good in a big old home and all this. Hey, why not? So, all right. I uh, We started dating. Of course, sex happened right away. The love bombing was great and everything. But then, after that, then this is where the women get mixed up. They get all messed up right here. Because after the dust settles and you start looking around, you know, something's not quite right. 
with this. Something is not quite right. His house was in foreclosure. <laughs> His, this nice home that he's parading me around and act like everything is beautiful and everything is in foreclosure. But see, he's setting me up for us to be together. You see? For us. Not realizing what's going on behind the scenes. We just thinking that, you know, this didn't work out because he did say that he and his wife was divorced. They was divorcing. He did tell me that. As a, let me see. As a matter of fact, when I met him, he told me he was divorced. But he wasn't. Uh, he was going through a divorce. And via, that's how I got, you know, to the house, got impressed by that, and the love bombing and everything was great or whatever. But I was just being set up. I was just being set up. Okay? This is what a narcissist does. But when he lost the house, we had a spat or something and kind of broken up. So he ended up in an apartment. He didn't have a thing. She had everything. So at least she was able to go back to her original house. But I know she lost a bundle in this new house. Because I know it was all her money. You see, this is how the narcissist operates. He's all about destroying you because he's jealous of you. You see, this woman that he was with before, she's an upstanding woman, had a great job, had a beautiful home, big too. But then he wanted to get her out of that home so they could get a home together. See, this is a trick of the narcissist. He knew he wasn't going to stay there in that home, but he would destroy her, making her lose almost everything, trying to make those shifts and everything. The narcissist is a very clever demon. So don't think that you can outsmart them. Your best bet is to get away from them and never look back no matter what. They'll come to you and even say that they've been to church and they get saved and sanctified and all that kind of stuff. It's a lie. They're demons. And once you understand that, you can save yourself. Okay? Uh, it took me uh, seven years, six, seven years, to totally uh, leave, to totally cut it off and leave the narcissist. Because even after he discarded me, you know, he would still call or, or text. Text was a good thing with him. You know, he would just say, text, how are you doing? Would you like to go for lunch? See, see, that's the test of waters. Test of waters. And if you say, okay, then it's on and popping again. Because mm -hmm. he needed that supply. He wanted that supply. And even if the narcissist is with the main supply, he's not satisfied with just you giving him everything and whatever he desires and, you know, making sure that he's comfortable and happy. No, that demon is not happy with that. He needs as much supply as possible. So he's going around slipping and sliding. But if he's religious, he's doing it to the uh, women in the church. And if he's an authority figure, he's using that to do it. See, a lot of uh, leaders are narcissists or very narcissistic because they believe it's more powerful to be in that spirit but it's a demonic spirit it hurts and destroys people you see some of these women I'm telling you some of these women have ended up in a psych ward messing with the narcissist messing with the narcissist because they have given their heart to this evil being when the evil being is only getting your heart to crush it, to kill you, leave you dead, is spiritual warfare. And when you understand that, see, you will slowly but surely release that hurt and how you feel like 
maybe I should have done this. Or maybe I wasn't enough for him. Or maybe I wasn't pretty enough. Or maybe if I had done this. Or maybe if I had went and got bigger boobs. Or bigger behind. Because when I was with the narcissist, he tried to get me to do that. I said, no, you're crazy. No. You see? It's not you, ladies. You're dealing with demonic energies. It's not you at all. When you're with a man and he tries to make you feel low or make you feel like there's something wrong with you all the time, you're never just wonderful, beautiful, and they love you. It is ne it's never that. Now, the narcissist, let me tell you this about loving the narcissist. The narcissist will say they love you uh, once they get sex. Of course they will. They won't show you that they love you, but they will say it. Because they can't show you love because they don't have love to give. There's no love inside of them. So they have love to give. But they can say it. And they will say it uh, in the presence of others that makes them feel or look big. Because they always want to appear to be powerful to other people. They really care what other people think. Okay? But for you, the narcissist chose you because you have everything that the narcissist doesn't. And the narcissist plans to take it all from you. But this is the funny thing about the narcissist. Even if when he takes it from you, and I've seen this a couple of times, when he takes everything that you have, even to the point of taking your life away. So he's got it all. He's got the home, the car, the money, everything. Before you know it, he's lost it all just like that. And still dies poor. I have seen that happen a number of times. Of course, that's karma. <laughs> Anybody in this universe, even the demons, have to suffer karma. So... Whatever you do, you're going to get back. But, ladies, you can guard yourself. Don't be so desperate for a man, number one. And when you meet a man, if he tries to rush you to the bed, to sex, and anyway, even if he tries to finger you in the car, you just cut it off and tell him no. No. No, no, no. Don't go that way because he could be a narcissist. Narcissists want sex right away because... This is the way that they bond with you. I mean, soulfully bond with your soul, your energy, that they can manipulate you from afar. And you could be home in your bed sleeping, and he can make you dream about him. He can make you want to call him and things like that because these are evil spirits, people. So understand what you're dealing with. Now, let me go on and read. Um, I know I got way off her letter. But let me kind of go back to it. And see here. You were very much to the point. She was always there. He's talking about the gutter rat. She talked about the gutter rat. And as you say, she has known every relationship he has been in. I know this for a fact. As a woman of faith. Because of what I was going through in my marriage, I am now divorced. I did not know I had not discerned that I was in a relationship as you named him a demon. <laughs> That's what he was, a demon. It is difficult for me to ever come to the realization that he never loved me and was using me. I know it took me a long time. <laughs> It took me a long time to come to that realization because I tried to look back and say, well, what was it? But then in my, on my spiritual journey, I realized what it was. You see, these demons, they can create an illusion for you because they are powerful beings too. And they're spiritual. And if you're not spiritual, you're just dumb to it. But... They can create an illusion for you. Other than the fact that there are chameleons and they can change to be exactly whatever your dream man is, they can be that. 
for who, whichever woman they're with. For me, he was one way. When I saw him a while after the discard, I hardly recognized him. He had changed just that fast to who, whatever woman he was with. So this is the thing about, about them. And they can create <clears throat> some sort of illusion for you to live in with them. Some sort of fantasy world that you live in with them. And it makes you feel like this man really loves you and cares for you and he wouldn't hurt you. That's the illusion. That's the illusion. So you, once you understand this, really, it helps. It helps you to heal. All right, so let's go on. We had great times together. I know you did. We did too. And I have so many great memories. That's fine. Love the memories that you had, but not him. <laughs> Love the things that you did with him, but, you know, just blank his face out. All right. It truly was the best time of my life. I fell in love with him. And after two years, I still suffer from a broken heart. Well, it took me two and a half years to get over it, to heal from it. But I was on my spiritual journey during that time, which means that during those two and a half years, I was doing my meditations every day and my affirmations, and I was doing a lot of reading. And uh, in the description, you see a list of the books that I have in my library because uh, on my spiritual journey, Spirit led me to get this book. And then I would get that book and read it. And it took me on a journey, reading, researching, and then it would uh, send me to places where somebody would speak something that was on my mind that I, you know, I, I was questioning about. And I may turn on the TV and there is somebody talking about it. Things like that. You see, we are living in a spiritual world. It's energy. And once you get on that path, a lot of things would be revealed to you. Things that, that just went over your head before. Words cannot explain, but I am sure you know what I did for him on all levels. I know you did. I know you did. I, I rolled out my whole home for him. I told him, I said, listen, I am willing to share my home with you, but I'll never give it to you. And when I told him that, he, <laughs> I, I, I never forget. He looked a little funny like that wasn't satisfactory. <laughs> so I guess he was after the whole kid and boodle. But fortunately, it didn't work out like that. Even though he left like a ghost to friends, he has called me everything except the child of God that I am. He talks horribly about me. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you about that. I'm going to tell you why. When the narcissist leaves you, he goes off and talks about you. Bad. To everybody that will listen. It's because he doesn't want people to look at him as being the issue. You see? But anybody who's listening to him and knows him and knows that he's doing this, that he has been shifting from one woman to the other woman and going on like that and coming up with these excuses every time, they know he's the problem. But still, he will set you up even when it's time for the discard. Because um, I remember close to my discard, he would be angry all the time for no reason. And uh, we had a gathering, and his family came. Well, he started a fight right before they came. So naturally now, I'm, I got a little attitude. Now we have a get-together. His family's here. You see? So even during that time, he would do little things to irritate me. And it was just not a happy occasion because he made sure it wasn't. And it made me in a bad light, I'm sure, from his family because of the things that he had already set them up 
and told them about me. And then he they come to the party and I'm acting all funny and weird. You see, this is how the narcissist sets you up. This is the smear campaign. The, and they all do the same thing. All of them. So, see, when you understand these things, you understand what this demon has done. And there's no reason for you to lose sleep at night or cry about it anymore. Because, sleep, see, when I got my discard, I cried enough for everybody. But I hopped right on my spiritual path. And that was the good thing about the whole experience. Because narcissists actually, actually teach you something. Okay? All right, let me tell you. After I got on my spiritual path and healed, I understood that if it were not for this experience, I would not be here. I, I would not be here. I would still be in that same energy of low vibration, dealing with those same sort of people over and over and over again. Being miserable, being poor, being disgusted. Right over there. That's where I would have been. If it had not been my experience with the narcissist. I learned that I have power. I learned I have value. I have high self-esteem, confidence. I love myself. And I won't let anyone come and try to destroy anything about me or anything that I built. You understand? I wasn't that strong before I met the narcissist at all. But, see, you can allow the narcissist to break you. You got free will. Or you can use that energy to build yourself up. And you know a little saying I like to say, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> make you some lemonade. Really. So I look at my experience with the narcissist as really a blessing. It was a lesson and a blessing for me. And it can be the same thing for you. But you have to heal. You must get on your spiritual path to open up these realizations to you and to make you strong and happy again. You know, uh, after I healed, I had not felt this good about myself since way back when I was a little girl. A little girl. Way before my dad got his hands on me. <laughs> little girl. And all the people after that, you know, beating down your self-esteem, trying to tell you who you are and who, what you can't do and, and all of that. That beats you down. But after I got spiritually healed, I'm not affected by it anymore. And I can, you see, I can talk about the narcissist. You don't see no tears coming down. You don't see me looking sad or anything like that. I tell you, it was a lesson and a blessing. So I hope that you can look at it like that. And I hope that what I've said today can really help. Now, those of you who have questions that you would like for me to answer, my email is in the description. And those of you who uh, would like your affirmation for today, also a link in the description. I think it says affirmation and exercise. Okay. And um, I thank you so much for your comments for your letters, and a very special thank you for those that leave a donation. I really appreciate all of you. I wish you all the very best, and I really hope to see you next time.